Sound now, Zig. You have sound now, Ziggy? Let me know. Ah, it's a good thing I'm early. Not good. I have 25 seconds to find sound. Do I have sound now? Testing. Do I have sound? It says I have sound. Yes. Oh, look at that. 15 seconds to spare. <laughs> See, that's why I say come on early because it's always way more interesting. Thank you for giving a heads up, Ziggy. I would have, that would have sucked. All right. Is it going to roll over? It rolled over. This is so fantastic. Well, I have a 21 second delay today, but hopefully, hopefully this is all gonna work. Uh, change the setup a little. Hello everybody, I am David R. Day, and we're gonna call this a day's life. Um, I've been using that off and on on my Sundays and that sort of thing, it just kind of fit. Um, Lots of negative about blah, 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 although it was my personal favorite. I had a few other choices, and it kind of came down to, uh, you know, you wanted to call it something that had my name in it. Um, not all that comfortable with all that, but, you know, let's roll with it. I am committed to do these every Friday night at 6 p.m. I got a lot to talk about tonight, so tonight we're going to talk about the power of creativity, and I think that that is going to be a key, a, a core of this show. Um, creativity literally saved my life, and I think it's really important. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We had over 300 views on last week's show, so once a week is probably enough. Um, I was lucky if I got 100 on the daily show, so 300 is fantastic. So it really, really, really pleases me to my heart and to my core that so many people find this interesting. <clears throat> so let's keep it up. Um, if you're a new lister, we do this. Uh, this is an outgrowth of, I did roughly 60 shows, 61, 62, 63 shows. I went on every day. It was fascinating. We built a great group of people. Um, a bunch of you are on right here. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, it was so, so very rewarding to, uh, to go live and have you folks hang out with me. So, more volume, Zig says. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, hopefully that's not too much. There is some more volume. I'm really getting pretty good with this software, figuring out how to run it. Thank you for uh, for letting me. Yes, yes, Mark, I needed, I needed a haircut, so I cut it all off. Fantastic. Uh, my friend Rosalie Jumpadralia, who has been cutting my hair literally since high school. We are high school friends, so there we go. Well, like I said, we had uh, <clears throat> we had 300 people look at that view. If you want to be notified that this is going to come on, then hit the notification button so it will tell you when I'm going to go on. I'm not going to just do Fridays. I will come on live, um, like if I have an event, like a gallery opening or something like that, just so things... Uh, just so kind of spice it up. I may actually even do some more produced shows during the week, but I've committed to every Friday at 6 o'clock, which is kind of a bummer because my wife and I generally watch Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy on <clears throat> the evening, so it's kind of messing things up. She used to work out on Friday nights, but she doesn't do that anymore. So, Sharon, you're welcome. Uh, I'm glad to turn it up. Uh, like I set this up. I have to set it up every day when it's new because the camera that I'm using here... This camera is my main camera, and it's the camera that I use for my commercial work. So, there we go. So, how are you all? Um, oh, I need to thank, I want to thank you all. I want to thank some people who have bought some of my work. I appreciate it. Uh, in addition to Ziggy, who has his, um, there is a good chance that... Um, <laughs> Uh, there is a good chance that Tina may have received hers today. I haven't heard. And it's her birthday today. So everybody wish 
wish Tina Borton Gratton. Tina Gratton Borton a happy birthday. Um, I don't see whether or not she's here. It's kind of hard for me to tell who's here and who's not. So hope, hopefully she's watching or she'll get a chance to watch the rerun. Happy birthday to Tina. And thank you. Thank you all for all the encouragement and the help and the discussion over the last couple of days talking about <clears throat> what we're doing here. How about you? Um, in Idaho, things have kind of gotten back to normal. We're wearing masks. We're doing some social distancing. But the bars open, I believe, tomorrow. Um, movie theaters can open if they f can find a way to distance. So things are back to what I guess we're going to have to call the new normal. Um, I had a really good week this last week. I turned 63. It's also my birthday week. Seems so old. 63. I just... it. Yeah. I just have a hard time wrapping my head around that I'm in my 60s because I still feel like I'm 30 and I feel like I have the body of, well, sometimes I feel like I have the body of a 63-year-old, but um, I got into the studio a lot. I produced the work that I got to ship out to, uh, to, uh, to Wendy Lee and to also created the work for for uh, Tina, um, I'm working on a piece for Cindy. Um, man, how fantastic is that? Thank you all so, so very, very much. It's not updating my comments, so I'm just going to fly blind here. So I had a great week. And I got to go out and find the wild horses. If you are a regular follower of the show, you know that I have a thing for the wild mustangs of the West. And my friend Tony Moody and I went out and we hiked. My phone said I hiked 38 floors. Um, I don't know what that mean. 38, so it would be up and down. So it would be something like, uh, uh, you know, 17 floors up, 17 floors down. I guess it would be 18, 19, 19 floors up and down. Um, it took us forever, but we did find him. This band was way more nervous than the Sand Basin band, but I did get to see him. And man, when you're out in the middle of the Idaho desert and you get to look at those big, beautiful beautiful horses. It is a very, very, very... <laughs> okay, I can get my messages over here. And my friend Robert <laughs> says it's my new haircut that makes the horses skittish. Um, that could very well be. So I went out with Tony on Sunday. And then on, what was it, Wednesday, I got to go out with <clears throat> Robert Riddle, who is, uh, is fortunately with us tonight. And we got to see these horses. Um, I was kind of getting a little bored. I'd just about given up, and then there was a fight. We call it a battle, and we're going to talk about that later in, in the segment I call Why'd You Take a Picture of That? So, what a fantastic week. So, we're going to call this a day's life, and, uh, you know, it's a little vague, uh, but it's a little punny, and I have to thank both Robert and uh, uh and Tony, because when you're to get to these horses, it's in both cases, it's roughly a mile, an hour and a half out, and an hour and a half back. So you talk about whatever, you know, and it's kind of fun. So this show is going to be a little bit travelogue. If I've gone and done something interesting, uh, I do get out two or three times a month. So hopefully that'll be enough, and we'll get to talk about where I went and what I did. And uh, so it's a bit travelogue. Um, it's also a discussion of the power of positive creativity. Um, it's a lot of the things we've talked about. It's being grateful for what you have, but it's more important than that. We're going to do. We're going to talk about exploring your creativity, and uh, we're also. I'm going to show you the Photo Friday. In fact, tonight it's not one, not two, but three photos for Photo Friday, which I'm really excited about, and. I'm going to end with a video I took out in the middle of the nowhere uh, in, the, uh, in the Black Canyon herd management area with my good friend Robert Riddle. So let's get right to it. That was a long ramble. My intro will not always be that long, but I kind of had to cover some stuff like the name and what we're going to do. So let's talk about positive creativity. What is that? So... When you're creative, you generate endorphins within yourself, and it becomes very positive. If you're making something, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be writing or artwork. Um, I know, I know people whose jobs are very involved, and they're creative. Doctors and nurses are often creative. Um, <clears throat> salesmen, uh, some of the most creative people I've ever known in my life were salespeople. Even people who are doing things like woodworking or 
you know, you can be creative in just about anything. You can certainly be creative in your uh, love life and how you relate to your children and how you relate to others. And over the course of the weeks, we're going to talk about how important it is to be positively creative. I want to reach out to those people who have let their creativity go. This idea came because I was in a gallery a while ago and I, I often hear when people say, oh, I really love your work, but I'm just not creative. I completely disagree. We're all creative and we need to capture the positivity. We need to capture the power of being creative. So that's what we're going to talk about. That's going to be the core when I don't have anything else to blah, blah, blah about. So what do you think, folks? Do you want to learn more about your creativity? Um, I'll share a little bit about my struggles and my challenges to be creative and we're just going to really, really go deep into being positively creative. I think that's going to be the key and I really hope that that works. Um, creativity is a mindset. It's, it's a view. It's a way of, of looking at things. It's kind of like positivity. Um, you can certainly, as we have talked about, look at a glass half full or half empty or if you're a a physicist then you might want very well want to look <laughs> you might very well want to look at the, the glass as half full of water and half full of air so if you're a scientist that's creative thinking right there so that's what we're talking about I want you to think about being creative we'll use some of my examples and of course if you want to chime in I would greatly appreciate with you um, telling me what it is that you do to be positively creative. Ah, all right. Take a deep breath. It was a long ramble. Sorry about that, my friends. Um, I love doing this, and I'm so excited. I get really nervous before I do these shows. Uh, um, it's kind of fun. Oh, my friend Laura Latham is. Uh, uh, Laura, Laura has wandered in. Um, I wish you all could see the photograph she posted earlier of her of her and her husband in their full 70s glorious um, glorious hair. Uh, I wish I had it and I could post it, but if you're Laura's friend or Stan's friend, I would guess uh, you should take a look at it because it was glorious 70s. Uh, she married Rockstar, so there you go. And he's become a great person outside of his rock and roll talents. Uh, Except he does have a bit of a guitar obsession. So thank you, Laura, for joining us. How fun is that? So let's move on if we can. Oh, I also need to talk about, I have a show at Dawson Taylor. And if we're lucky, we're going to be able to take a look at that. So I took this. Oh, 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 guys, I got to tell you, I'm really proud of myself for having the little corner picture thing. Um, <laughs> you know, it's the simple things. Those of you who have been, been with me on a regular uh, basis will understand how hard it is. So first, I want to talk a little bit about how I got this photograph. This is the Sand Basin Herd. They are a bit south and just a little bit east of Murphy, Idaho. Robert Riddle and I wandered out, and we knew exactly where these horses were. We were going to drive. We go in his Subaru station wagon. Now, you have to understand that 
these are not roads that normal people would drive a Subaru station wagon. But Tony, or not Tony, Robert is is truly an Idaho backwoods driver, and he handles those roads as well as my pickup truck or Tony's great big uh, Tundra truck. He's just really, really good at driving it. So off we go. We are guaranteed. We know exactly where these horses are. We drive up to where they are, and they aren't. They've moved. We can't find them anywhere, so we're kind of disappointed. But we're, we we know where they have been in the past, so we're thinking maybe we'll go back there, driving along bump, 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 bumpy roads. And we look over, and there they are. And it was like, oh, it was almost something out of a movie. Clouds, big fluffy clouds, cirrus horsetail clouds. And there you are. Hello, Tina. Happy birthday. Welcome to the uh, Coffee Mates. I'm wondering if you got your photograph today. Um, uh, it was supposed to be there. I haven't checked, so hope, hopefully you did. And happy birthday to Tina. Everybody, you know, give her a round of applause. Yay! Everyone say hold you because I'm way older than you are. My point is, going back to this photograph, is we uh, look across this pane. We're like, okay, are they between this road or that road? Are we going to have to hike? Long story short, we drove back out, we drove in, and there they were, still in the sunshine. <clears throat> now, in the past, they've let us get pretty close. They were a little bit skittery. Um, apparently, uh, my friend Robert thinks it might be my new haircut. Um, it could be the brace that he was wearing to, to keep his back from falling off. Who knows? Today or this day, they were not as quite as... Uh, um, they, wouldn't, they weren't quite as friendly. They, weren't, they were still curious. They came pretty close to Robert, but they stayed pretty far away from me, so maybe it was the haircut. So you stand around and you take photographs of these big, beautiful, magnificent creatures. It's fun to just be out there. Um, if you've seen my feed, I've posted a couple other ones, including the HMA board. And I was kind of bored. I was about ready. I was getting hungry. Um, it was about time for me to, to maybe see if I could talk Robert into walking back. And all of a sudden... These two stallions decided that they were going to fight. And this is a series of photographs. They're probably a half a second apart. And I am so happy because everybody wants that standard, fighting, fantastic battle of wild horses. But there's something more about this photograph, if you will look, these three photographs. They are almost a perfect composition. The horses form a... a a V, a kind of an upside down letter. If you will notice in the background, their their heads are just above the horizon, so the horizon doesn't conflict. And the other thing, interesting thing about it is it really sets the scene. Is the other horses don't really care. All that battle going on, snorting and and you know, all sorts of craziness going on. The rest of the horses don't care. Um, this is a fairly common thing. So there you go. That's why I took a picture of that. Thank you all, folks. Um, I'm going to end with a video that I took this same day of these horses, much calmer, much sm smoother, and much easier. I certainly, certainly want to thank all of you for coming. I will be back next week right here. If you want to find out more about me, including the video, uh, I have reproduced the video from last week, Where the Wild Horses Thunder. Um, it is on my YouTube channel, and you can find me as David R. Day, a creative, David, David R. Day, Boise. There are two David Days, so <clears throat> there are two David R. Days, so you kind of have to look a little bit. You can find that. I will post this video probably tomorrow morning, maybe this evening. Um, so you can always find the Days Lives. This is Days Life number two, although the first one didn't really have a name. So if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would appreciate it. I am beginning to work on my website. Um, I am also working on my book, which is called Just Around the Bend, and that's enough plugs for today. So let's see if I can pu pull out this video that I call Mustangs Wander. <laughs>